Once the black bear roamed over the whole of Virginia, from the mountains to the coast. Long ago, American Indians and settlers alike valued the black bear. Its hide and fur made warm clothes, its meat was a staple food, and its fat was made into tallow candles. Today, the bear's range is much smaller. Consisting of two separate populations, one is found in Virginia's Allegheny Mountains, and the other lives around the Great Dismal Swamp in the southeast. Biologists from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries and Virginia Tech are working together to find out more about the lives of bears in Virginia. They call their study the Cooperative Allegheny Bear Study, or CABS for short. Let's take a look outside and learn what scientists can tell us about the biggest animal in Virginia, the black bear. I'm Monica, I'm in eighth grade. Desmond, eighth grade. <laughs> Hope well, <too. laughs> Aaron, eighth grade. Jacob, fifth grade. Ben, eighth grade. April, sixth grade. Students from Chester, Blacksburg, and Hopewell are visiting Virginia Tech's Center for Ursid Research to learn more about the bear study. She probably recognizes me since I do theater every day, um, but that doesn't mean she likes me. One of the questions that's uh, most frequently asked is, are bears dangerous? Well, heck yes, they're dangerous. Bears are big animals, they're powerful animals, and they can inflict injury on humans. The fact is they rarely do. Bears are also secretive animals and they're shy animals and they tend to stay away from people. Dr. Michael Vaughn is the bear expert at Virginia Tech. He oversees the bear project and helps college students learn about bears. In order for the students to work with the bears, the protective mother bears have to be put to sleep. What I am doing is I'm loading up a dart. Um, this is how we deliver the drugs to the adult bears. Um, we use a drug called ketamine and xylazine to immobilize the bear. We put our bear on that has the dart inside and we put some CO2 pressure behind the dart and then just press the trigger and the dart comes out. So we're going to dart one of the bears now. What do you mean? Careful aim must be taken with the dart in order to assure that the bear is sedated properly. Good shot. A few minutes later, and it's safe for the students to enter the bear cave. The cubs can now be taken from the mother bear, who is sound asleep. Watch out for their claws. Go ahead and put them underneath your jacket. <laughs> Okay. And the best thing to do to calm them down is if they start to uh, start crying, you go ahead and rub them. And watch out, they like to climb a lot, so you want to hold their head down or hold it right at the shoulders. Like as if she was a bear, you would take a, the cub and you'd put your hand right there so she doesn't climb up, okay? Because she's going to scratch your neck, so be real careful. Go ahead and walk them and bring them into the lab where it's nice and warm. The drug only works for a short time, so the students must work fast. Here you go. go ahead and put on your sweatshirt. Watch out for the claws, okay? And keep it nice and warm and go ahead and bring the lab. Back in the lab, biologist Betsy Stenson explains how the cubs grow and why studying them is so important. This little cub was born in January, late January. It's a little male and he weighs about two pounds. When these little guys are first born, they weigh about eight ounces. They're very small, they're about eight inches long. They're blind, or actually their eyes aren't open. Uh, they're helpless, and they're always born in the den with the female uh, bear. And they'll be studied as they grow. Every 10 days or so, the cubs and the mother bears are taken out, and the researchers here take a variety of measurements to look at growth rates, and also to look at the effects of nutrition on the mother bear and on <coughs> reproduction and on cub production. The bear study calls for a series of precise measurements. And this measurement is called actual length. It's taken from the tip of the nose to the tip of the bone and the tail. 
Now it's the students' turn to measure the cubs. It's looking my neck. It's looking my neck. <laughs> I'm measuring the actual length of this pub. Measure from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tailbone. And it is 19 centimeters long. The students have lots of questions about the cubs. What's the earliest age that they can like climb a tree? They could climb a tree right now and they can climb a tree probably about 20 days old or so. When we first get them, we first start handling them at about 10 days old usually. Probably not strong enough to climb a tree at that point. The mother's really protective of them and covers them with her body to protect them. About 20 days on, they're going to usually be strong enough to be able to climb a tree part way, if not the entire way up. Do the cubs hibernate with the, parent, with the mom when they're first born? The cubs, when they're born, when they're born in January and February, they stay that first winter with their mother, and their mother keeps them nice and warm in the den, warm and dry, and they stay again with her a second winter, and then they're released, and they go, on, and go off on their own. How do bears prepare for hibernation? Bears prepare for hibernation by eating almost constantly. Bears begin preparing for hibernation in the fall. In this state, in the state of Virginia, bears are particularly dependent on acorns as a source of food, and, and acorns start dropping from the trees in, in late August and early September, and it's the bear's major source of food. And bears go into a stage of, of uh, overeating. The uh, technical term is hyperphagia, and it means overeating, and they eat day and night and they may consume 10, 12,000 calories a day in food. They may uh, increase their body weight 40 or 50 percent over what it was in uh, the summertime. All that weight helps bears when their bodies slow down during denning. But bears are not true hibernators. Their bodies never shut down. They don't eat and they don't drink when they're hibernating but their body slows down, their temperature drops a little bit, their metabolism slows down, everything slows down. But if you find a bear in a den, it can still get up and go after you. So you still gotta be careful. They're not completely sleeping, but they're a little groggy. Even trained biologists have to be careful around a bear den. Cubs are also captured, weighed, and measured in the wild. Many are found denning in hollow trees. Graduate students and biologists locate a bear tree. One of the students climbs up and darts the mother bear. Part of the tree is cut away and the cubs are removed. The bears are weighed, measured, and collared, just like in the lab. Soon the cubs are back with their mother, and the tree is once again a snug den. The study of bears in the wild, together with research in the controlled environment of the lab, is what makes cabs unique. Um, I learned that um, the mama bear does all the raising of the children, and the papa bear does nothing. He just mates and then goes off and does whatever. Well, I learned that bears hibernated in trees. I didn't know they did that. And um, their bodies kind of like shut down and their kidneys like recycle. And they don't like pee or poop or anything like that when they're hibernating. Well, the bears when they hibernate, they're groggy. Like if they feel, feel that they're in danger or something, they can wake up and they can react. The reason they're studying bears is so we can better understand the bears and what they do and how they live, how they survive. Now it's time for the cubs to be returned to the mother bear. She'll be waking up any minute. It's really cute and I think they're, that's a really nice thing how they're going to their mom and trying to make her wake up. But this family of bears won't live at the lab much longer. After these cubs get to be anywhere from about five to eight pounds, which will be probably in May or so, they'll be released with the mother back to the area uh, near where the mother bear came from. 
and they'll be let go into the wild to carry on their life as wild bears. Female black bears are generally excellent mothers. They're very protective of the young cubs and they take good care of them. The little cubs will, will stay with the mother. She'll teach them how to survive in the forest. She'll teach them all the good things there are to eat out there. Bears are a magnificent creature. Uh, there's a lot that we can learn from them and some of their physiological differences from us and some of their behavioral differences and we can learn to live together as long as we respect each other.